I've done some big gigs in my time, but I must say this is putting the icing on the cake. I'm sitting here at the Hard Rock Cafe in NYC, and next to me is Tiffany Renee Darwish. You probably actually know <laughs> her as Tiffany. Tiffany. Not everyone knows Tiffany. Uh, you know, there's some people are younger, and they know I think we're alone now, which is really weird. Yeah. Maybe they don't recognize me right off the bat, and when I introduce myself, and I'll say, Tiffany, and they look at me like I'm such bad-mannered that I'm not introducing <laughs> a last name. Oh, you're Tiffany. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> I think we're alone now. <laughs> Which has its own life. I can't even explain it. You mentioned you're 14 when you recorded right. that record. That sort of puts you in that bizarre child, teen, pop star. How was that? I had been singing since I was nine years old touring professionally. So for me, I just wanted to sing. To be a sign artist and to travel the world. Once I was signed to a label, they didn't know what to do with me. Yeah. Being 14 and 15, I couldn't go to clubs. People liked the music, but I was a little girl. And everybody out there was like partying and hanging out. Feeling guilty yeah. that they're drinking <laughs> while watching a 14 year old girl sing. It failed miserably in that beautiful period of the late 80s. Is there any sort of outfit or look that you're a bit embarrassed by? I was 14 when I did the record, and my manager was like, let's take the picture. I had just come from school, and literally there was no makeup artist, there was no one watching. The photographer put on the jean jacket on me. That's how I ended up with jean jackets. I look at pictures now and I go, oh, what was I thinking? But it was more the frizzy, permed hair. But that was 80s hair, man, you know? At that time, it was really cool, I have to say. Would you have any advice for, say, the, the younger stars that are coming through, like your Justin Bieber types? No matter if you're young or you're an adult, it's a crazy ride. There's been people that have been 40 and have messed it all up. But if you love it and you love music, you're going to stay with it no matter what. In 2007, a documentary was made featuring two obsessed Tiffany fans. I just saw that documentary recently that I think we're alone now with the stalker. I've never seen it. Tiffany and I have uh, known each other most of her life and uh, we are in love with each other and uh, she's a great singer. <laughs> Initially, you know, you go, ha ah, ha, that person's a bit crazy, but then it started to actually sort of affect me a bit. As a 16 year old, she was forced to get a restraining order against Jeff Dean Turner. They have my whole name in there. Well, the director or producer, the way that he got me on camera was say that he was a student at the college making a film. Also, he misrepresented. And so he, he misrepresented himself. So I was like, sure, come back and ask me questions. And then it got into stalkers and craziness. And then later on is when I found out he put all that together. Uh, this documentary gets seen, it'll blow the lid off everything and change everyone for the better. It's kind of not cool. I, I think you have to be aware of people that kind of take it too far. I might ask for a fingernail or a toenail, a lock of hair, or a, or a scab or a skin from a blister or something. I could ask for that. You see the artists and they make a, an, uh, you know, goo-goo eyes at you while they're singing. You might think, oh, you know, because it's a fantasy. In 2002, <laughs> Tiffany decided to pose for Playboy. How'd your parents react to doing well, a Playboy happy. shoot? <laughs> so whose parents really are, I suppose. It was awkward because I have a 17-year-old son now. But at the time, he was younger. Everybody was like, what is Elijah going to think? And I was like, well, I'm not going to parade the magazine around. I mean, obviously, he's not going to be on the, the, the shoot <laughs> standing there. But I have to be proud about doing it. And the same thing with acting. Mm -hmm. Done uh, the sci-fi Mega Piranha just aired. Mega Piranha. <laughs> it was giant piranha. I play a scientist who beef up the piranha. So when they catch them as a food source. But instead, they eat, they grow, they multiply. And they will never, ever stop. And they're they leaping out of the water piranha. and grabbing helicopters out of the air. If you could Second. catch one of those mega piranhas, then you're, you're feeding a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, it's cheesy. You fish food. We're doing a thing as we tour around. It's sort of like a story where one person writes a line and then we cover up the line and the next person writes a line. It can be anything you want, as esoteric as you want. Well, this way you'll always know that it's me. <laughs> I think we're alone now. Thank that you so much. And um, just before we go, if you wouldn't mind signing the jacket. Woohoo! All right. Sorry. It has been wonderful meeting oh, you. Oh, thank you.